Franklin was this wonderful self-taught writer who becomes the most popular and the best and the most conversational and the most logical writer of that century in America. Benjamin Franklin had written a scheme for a reform spelling and new mode of writing as early as 1768. Franklin was a very scientific, very logical person. He said, always, let's look at what works, what's practical. And he looked at the English language, and it wasn't practical. It had weird letters. It had... It had consonants that had nothing to do with the sounds. It was superfluous. And he wanted to make everything logical. And so he tries to change the letters and the fonts so that it becomes much more sensible, more scientific. The inspiration was probably the uh, Italian uh, uh, reform, where uh, you went from... Uh, uh, Latin being the only language that you could spell, if you were an Italian, <laughs> to uh, someone who came up with the idea that, uh, well, we can spell the vernacular too. And uh, they did a remarkably good job in, uh, in translating uh, the uh, uh, vernacular from one region into uh, a sensible uh, spelling system. When people say, well, well, how can we change English? You know, how can you reform uh, English? I and mean, he always runs back to Italian now. Yeah, well, they did it. When Franklin does his uh, new language and new characters and stuff, at first, of, at first he tries it out on Polly Stevenson. Polly was a wonderful young woman in England, the daughter of his landlady, and Franklin had a very flirtatious relationship with her, but also an engagement with her mind. So he wrote her letters in this, using this new alphabet. And Polly was very solicitous at first, even though the letters are almost unreadable. But in one of the letters, it's quite amusing. She finally says, OK, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to sign myself and in this letter in the traditional sense, because it's so much easier for me. She raised a lot of objections uh, to this language. It, it, it pulls words away from their Latin roots or their old English roots. It pulls them away from their meaning a little bit. And he said, no, people will get used to that. It's more logical. It'll help people learn the language. And so this wonderful exchange of letters is his way of working out the idea. Years later, the letters he wrote to Polly Stevenson he, uh, are given to Webster. Webster publishes them. Webster uh, dedicates his dissertation on language to Benjamin Franklin. And so it's this exchange of letters with Polly Stevenson that inspire Webster and eventually others to try things like this.